Welcome back to the Keep It Tottenham podcast. I'm the token bird. Who are you? I'm I'm not the token bird. Hello. That's very definitely the case with a beard like that. Which has a faint aroma of um, king pot noodle curry flavour. <laughs> I'm so ashamed. So honestly, it's the first one I've had in about a year. And are you also ashamed? We've, we've missed a week of the old podcasting. Hope you haven't um, missed us too much, folks, but you were away on your private island. And we do pay attention to um, uh, petitions. Do we? Yeah. So that Since we when? took. No, well, they wrote in in their number and said, look, their number. Please, please no more. The singular. Yeah. Here's some music. <laughs> Um, you appear to have developed a... a have some... I gone even more A up? Well, it's not so much that, it's just the noise. It's very noisy. That's because the house is quiet, apart from the dog. You well, might hear the dog panting in the all the people back in, in out the garden then? <laughs> in their car coats. That just went look through... Good, that just a, went, that just went, car went through me, that did. What went through you? The car but coat? No, the noise. It's just the the anyway. Let's Was move on. Was I being on. a token screechy bird? No, just noisy. I just shall just. Tone it. I shall tone no, it don't down. do that. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll be like back when you were on those pills. <laughs> oh, that those days were good. Yeah, but yeah. Um, in breaking news, did it? That's an vid, that? that's the video printer for people of a certain age. Is it? Arsenal very are very now very actually very shorter odds to be relegated than they are to win the Premier League. <laughs> That was even Am I allowed noisier. to laugh That was loudly. even noisier. Yeah. It's really annoying, isn't it? I won't do that again. In there. Um, yeah, so just... Are they just, beating Arsenal? Just, just ponder that for a moment. Very, very the, happy. The fact that it... I mean, nobody's betting on them. The only sensible bet on Arsenal would be that they're going to cease trading. But the but the but imagine walking into a bookmaker's or opening your handheld device and... I'd like to put some of my hard-earned cash. I've just been made redundant by a supermarket or whatever. It won't be a supermarket. It won't be a super- no, but no. Uh, sorry, wrong industry. But I'm just yeah, just but yeah, exactly. I'm just retra- retraining to, to, from being a taxi driver to being working for Hermes on twenty-five p an hour. And I, I thought what I'd do is I'd, I'd I'd multiply my 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 finances by putting a few quid on the football. So I'm going to walk into a bookies or open my head. I'm going to bet on Arsenal. What bet are you going to place? Arteta to be gone? Yeah. Yeah, I think sadly you might be right. I have no affection for the guy or, or hate uh, either way. But I, I I tell you what, I was, I'll come back to it later, but I was reading um, Ask Blog's blog. Post, oh, post, like I actually, yeah. I probably shouldn't say this on this podcast, but I actually quite like Ask Blog. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's he a is. nice guy. yeah. I mean, he's a sad, lonely loser, Arsenal but he's a, yeah, yeah, but he's a nice yeah. guy. He's a nice guy. Don't you share a birthday? That is not in the public domain. <laughs> oh, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> and you went into a drunken coma, <laughs> if I recall correctly. God, it was over a decade ago. Yeah, that was, gr- that was good. So anyway, yeah, um, but his his take on it was, was, was interesting. And the reason it was interesting is, of course, because it coincided with my take on on football generally and what he didn't do was moan and whine and bitch about Tottenham parking the bus and I, unless I missed it and it was quite a lengthy blog on askblog.com um, which was entitled something along the lines of 44 crosses and no goals mm-hmm. and he, he just uh, pinpointed the frailties and the weakness and the failings of his own team. Mm -hmm. And what's the solution? And the fact that uh, uh, Boomerang um, Forehead, your uh, your company's logo here guy, he maintained that that guy is not a disaster, that he's had scores, he's just in a bit of a dry spell, a bit of a drought, and that he wasn't getting any service. But I just thought it was fascinating because... If we step away from the weirdo bubble, and let's face it, it is pretty weird, isn't it? You've got Graham Souness, who nobody appears to have much time for. Mm. Um, and in fairness, he's a bit grumpy, but doesn't have the comic effect of Roy Keane. <laughs> and you've got that midget lady who used to or does play for Arsenal, Alex something. Who, to be fair to her, did She's say... She's a token bird. 
Oh, uh, well. She Go can't on. play football like me. No. Not with those knees. <laughs> um, she, it, it, but you've yeah. got her. But you've got her. Yeah, but you've got her. To her. She was saying the same thing. But crosses into the box like that, that's not how Arsenal play. No. Uh, but, 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 but she was, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, no, very troublesome. Oh, yeah, it's problematic. And, yeah, and all the awful modern speak language that nobody in the street uses. Um, but you've got the streets around here, and you've got and you've got Sunis, who basically is 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 like, you know, he anyway, he's a grumpy old Scotsman. That's that's <laughs> that's the short version. And then you've got Jamie Redknapp. He does have a soft spot for us, though. Spurs well, he didn't have a very so, yeah, but he didn't have a very so, his spot wasn't very soft yesterday. He was moping on about basically he was challenging the integrity of the of, of Mourinho's methodology. And the whole thing was... No, I think well, he's just saying he doesn't like it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Maybe the personal preference, really. He, well, I'm sure he has personal preferences. We see the way he dresses. <laughs> and a lot of those shops aren't around anymore. But the the point being, you've got him. And Jamie Redknapp, whose wife left him. And they're all going, yeah, yeah, it's very negative, isn't it? And I'm sure I'm sure Lo, Lo Celso doesn't like but having all his creativity stifled. And the thing that they're missing is that these are professional sportsmen. And I, 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 it's like a Groundhog Day thing here because come back to this thing that it's winning is the metric. And if it isn't the metric, then the race horses, the race courses for horses would have no finish line. It would just be, and they're off, and they run around forever randomly. And they get medals for taking part. Yeah, and golf courses, they fill in all the holes. It's very, very straightforward. It's very straightforward. So, but so Ask Blog, who has because he's of a similar vintage, he is aware that his team used to win lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. He wants them to win. And so his approach, his analysis of how Arsenal played wasn't, oh, aren't Tottenham um, winning ugly or any other f corruption of language to take away from what I found, this is we'll come on to this as well. This was only going to be a 20 minute show and it's not. But we were, <laughs> but, but this Sorry, I've got coffee. This, this, co co hopefully, you won't fall asleep or start <laughs> dialing the Sam texting the Samaritans this time. <laughs> but, he, but he had this, the whole mentality of stealing from the good that Mourinho has done. Mm -hmm. And you have a team on top of the Premier League, free scoring. Yep. And suddenly we've got this sort of underbelly of of fans who are the, the you know, like the whataboutaries and the yeah butts. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, but, um, and I have got a solution. I was going to save it to the end or near the end, but I've got a solution. If you don't like the way Tottenham are playing. Okay. For those people who don't like um, the, what they're seeing, and I will say... They could take up croquet. Well, I would say that they don't understand what they're seeing, but that, that sounds terribly patronising, but sometimes you have, to, to, you have to break it to stupid people that they are, they're, <laughs> they're, they're on a loser. But if you don't like it, don't watch the games live under any circumstances, radio, nothing, complete radio silence, and only watch match of the day. Then you will be given, in sustainable doses of about six or seven minutes, the highlights, so you get the goals... Mm -hmm. The big incidents, mm -hmm. the blah, 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 and it's all served up for you. So you don't have to go through any of the aggravation. It's like it's like it's like they the, could watch the videos you put out on uh, Twitter. Yeah, exactly. But but the but the point being is, you can just get it. This sort of uh, what do you call it? Oven ready is a horrible <laughs> phrase these days. But you can just get this microwave meal that's quite quite filling. You know, you're not going to pass out. Blood sugar level will keep you. You know, you know those roast beef dinners you get in the shops. You know, there's there's the microwave meals. Personally, Just, a bit more of a nut roast kind of girl. Yeah, so I would imagine yeah. that. That's tedious. Do you see? That's what nobody was. But they were losing viewers, listeners at the viewers? moment. The moment you come, if, we, if we go back you to viewers, you will lose force them. that into the conversation, and people just they just, honestly oh, they just no. shut down. Think about it for your Christmas dinner. Go for a good old nut roast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or do Some what everybody wine. else is doing and stay in. But yeah, so that that's the deal. So anyway, Andrew uh, Asblog was looking at the, the thing from what a, his name, which is only in the public domain. <laughs> Apart from that, but the point being, the point being Hi, is, Andrew. yeah. But the point, yeah, he's listening. But the point being he is does. that he's he, listening to you. Yeah, but the, the you've got all of these weird people, and they are weird, mm. who are finding fault 
with Tottenham doing, and this is the the silent drum roll, what Chelsea Not and silent. City and Liverpool and everybody else has been doing. Suddenly, Tottenham fans are coming out of the woodwork telling us how amazing other teams are. <laughs> I, I am, I'm bereft of, of, of thoughts on that. That just kills me. I think that people find it more difficult to know what a footballer is doing when there isn't a ball at their feet than when there is a ball at their feet. Or they find it more difficult to understand what a team is doing when they don't have the ball versus the team with the ball. When I was a child, a mere innocent... Long, long time a, a, yeah, a mere innocent ago. youth... I used to listen to Tottenham Hotspur Football Club on the radio gram less wire. And because the way you listen to it on the radio, there's a couple of good commentators, and I can't precisely remember their names, so I'm not going to make them up or give the wrong credit. Yeah, but there were a couple of commentators, and they were just beautiful. It was like listening to poetry. And other people weren't so good. It was just bulk standard and fair play to them. But you got your ears pricked up, and your your heart rate quickened when they go, and they said, and that's Tony Galvin's push the ball. My, that's put Garth Crooks in space. Can he find Archibald? He's on the edge of the box, and you get this thing, and you think, oh, something coming, something coming, something coming, and then you wait for the crowd noise, because that would yeah, and the oh or the <laughs> yeah, that would happen just before the commentator got a chance to say anything, because mm-hmm. that's how the speed of sound works. And uh, science lessons while you wait. But but the point, so you, were, you you listen to the radio. And the trouble is, that's a very, very, very simplistic way of assessing, appraising, or um, uh, consuming a football match. I think it's the best way to consume a football match if you've got decent commentary, unlike talk <sighs> sport that I was forced to listen to recently. And no for thanks. a good ten minutes, I couldn't tell you what was happening on the pitch because they were too busy talking absolute... BS yeah. about things that happened ten years ago or what might happen in five months. Yeah, that well, that guy, that guy on Sky was depressing. He 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 was in this sort of jovial kind of Alan Partridge sort of thing. And, and funnily enough, uh, uh, Gary, it was in um, March of uh, 1974 that oh, uh, Tottenham went ahead, but and nobody, stuff. nobody don't wants care. to hear that. Don't care. I don't actually even need your opinion. When you're a commentator, tell us what's happening on the pitch. Yeah. Please, please, especially if you're radio commentary. The one guy... The one I guy. need to be able to see, in my mind, what is happening on the pitch. And if you're too busy talking about what stat you think is relevant from 1982, yeah. I can't do that. Well, we saw... Oh, I saw on the TV, they were talking to these one of these creatures that does this thing. And they think that it's an art form. They genuinely think that they're like... Um, well, you do it right. Well, I would say they're just actually providing a service for which they get paid. And they really should... It's like Mark Clattenburg. He lost touch with the reality of the fact that he was actually a referee. And he, you know, he was famously calling Rooney Wazza and stuff like this. And he was part of the gang and he got an agent. And he then had the, the hair. I saw his hair recently, and I have to say, I mean, obviously they just occasionally rip it out and put another one in, <laughs> um, in 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 the Lego factory. But it looked almost like real hair. Oh. Uh, so I mean, but he's in Chinese Super League. So I mean, what they can't do, <laughs> you could literally write on a grain on a grain of rice, if I'm allowed to say that on the BBC. But um, using a microscope. You know, when I said the other week that if Tim Sherwood is on your side, you know where you are. Yeah. So I've just quoted the the biggest 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 spur Shilo, Shilo, Shilo. the biggest uh, Arsenal blogger on the planet. So we have Martin yeah. Keown who said that Arsenal their footballing brain wasn't working and described Tottenham as being streetwise. So mm-hmm. we've got two big commentators, two big people who are published and aggregated everywhere on different sort of platforms and levels and so forth. Who managed not to snipe and belittle and moan and generally want a refund for Jose Mourinho getting us to the top of the table and free scoring and blah, 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 blah. It would be great if, say, somebody like Glenn Hoddle or somebody like that came out and said, this is fantastic. Yeah. And it's a different way of playing, but 
this corruption of language, again, this business of saying, oh, well, it's parking the bus, when it's such a, a dumb phrase that stands up to no scrutiny. And this leads me on to my next point, is if we could get somebody like that to come out and say, like, acknowledge that it isn't like this awful, evil thing that's undermining the integrity and the authenticity of football, yeah. raises the question, is, is defending sexy? I think it's amazing. I, I, I am so happy watching Spurs these days. I, I don't... With every game that I watch, I have increasing confidence that we, we can do it, that we can defend. When was the last time you watched a Spurs team and you thought, yep, we can defend? Yeah. Well, it's interesting you, um, mention, you mentioned that because I'll just jump in. You will. Do you, remember, yes. do you remember when Bonzo and Danny Rose played for us? Yes, I do. And we had the best back four or something in the Premier League for in terms of whatever. But the point of that... <laughs> That one statistic, Spurs fans, it's the old drunk clinging to a lamppost. It's more for support than illumination. Mm -hmm. That was a great defence at that time. There's no two ways about it. But as a team, that side didn't win anything and didn't look like it was going to win anything. And if it did finish in the top four, it was done by default. Spurs were never there and then it was chipped away at, which is what the situation is right now. Mm. And I know we're only 11 games in, so context, 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 you know. But the idea that being able to defend well and use this mid-block, or whatever Mourinho is calling it, this business of absorbing pressure, sitting deep, defending and making making sure that, um, that you're able to um, control the game, that shows intelligence, courage, discipline and resilience and to not acknowledge those and instead say that what you really want is what the voices in your head are saying or some other peculiarity that you want to see people belting down the wings you want to see Gareth Bale seven eight nine years ago belting down the wing beating eight men and then putting the rifling the ball into the, the mm. top top of the net yeah those things are good but we have learnt harshly, very, very harshly. And this is why we were, whilst we were in, all enjoying the road, the road, the ride, all enjoying <laughs> the, the bloody ride, the ride to nowhere, mm -hmm. because we didn't win anything. No. Nope. And those things, do you know what we learnt the hard way? We learnt that if you have a lot of that, the basics go out the window. And you end up scrapping to maybe finish fifth or sixth. Oh, fingers crossed Arsenal draw against Wolves. We could still finish fourth. Come on, lads. After you've thrown away dozens and dozens and dozens of points during the season. Quite. And this is all about Spurs being organised. And I see Hoybier nip the ball off oh, of somebody's toes. Just a Love him. Love him. And I don't... Anybody who doesn't find that exciting, maybe sexy's overplaying it, but anybody who doesn't find that exciting or watching the, the, the what do they call it? The gamesmanship when you give somebody a little nudge yeah, yeah, yeah. of, of Reguilon Reg, Reg or um, Lo Celso. Neither of them are afraid to leave a bit of a toe in and, and uh, do that. I mean, uh, what's his name? Hoibia, he again got three fouls against Arsenal and mm -hmm. no yellow cards. Smart. That's I love it. that's Smart. clever. Yeah. That's clever. And just while we're talking about him, ninety four percent successful passing accuracy for a defensive midfielder. Get him. If you don't admire that, and you don't see the the value in that, and this again, you know, I, I, I'm making this very um, them and us about the debate of people that don't get it, don't want to get it, and those of us enlightened few that can't get enough of it but Mourinho who I think you know referring to him as a serial winner mm -hmm. Mourinho talking about him in the presser after the game he said oh make no mistake he said that guy is going to be involved in coaching he said, yeah, yeah, he yeah. Said he's, he's got a, a footballing, but he wants he's, to know the, the back said, end of everything he said he's a pain he's yeah. coming to me asking questions 
talking about this, that and the other. And you can see him with his hand gestures, the way he's talking to other players. He's forever snarling in the ear of Eric Dyer. And I think all the guys know that he's earned the right to talk to people because he's marshalling his troops. Oh, yeah. And, and a football team, we have this craziness at Spurs where we our, our captain's in the flipping goal. <laughs> And, but the other craziness is you have the armband on on your best outfield player was always the way when I was at school. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And so Harry Kane would have it. But really, you should have a guy marshalling the defence. You should have a guy marshalling the midfield and the attack. And because these 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 teams they play in groups and in clusters, mm. and it makes far more sense that they're talking to each other. But he, his thing, um, the, the, I was going to say from Mourinho talking about um, uh, Hoybier, was he said, congratulations, Mr. Levy. Uh, and what he was saying there, for those of you dum-dums who didn't get it or don't want to get it, was that for threepence halfpenny, this suddenly, Daniel Levy has a very, very, very expensive defensive midfielder on his books. So that's my prediction. Hoybier uh, will be in for a big, fat contract. And well-deserved, super well-deserved. Well well-deserved, well I think we've established. But I'm just saying from a business perspective, Levy is going to tie this guy down. Because I, as I've made clear before, I don't think this pandemic nonsense is going away anytime soon. I'm, I'm very sceptical about the whole uh, deal. We'll go into that somewhere else. But... Football's going to be around forever, come rain or shine or pandemic. And this guy's value is 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 literally, I mean, it's just hysterical. And, and I, you know, I go through the whole thing again, but Southampton, um, what do they call them? Uh, the <laughs> connections in the, in the Southampton press. Oh, yeah, it's 35 million plus a space rocket plus a Tesla convertible, blah, blah. And he went for 15 quid plus that other kid who wasn't very good. Um, so they got their, their faces rinsed but there but yeah that, he, he was just exceptional just really really good look we won that game 2-0 mm. because who scored um, because the team were playing just amazingly mm. then gave two fantastic smart skilled experienced top of their game players chances to score well if you looked at the um there's a good site called in info goal um on the interwebs and they do a really easy to use expected goal thing and it gives you a fantastic at a glance and i use their their, their graphics without crediting them um but i i, I use their graphics in, info goal.com for absolutely amazing and at a glance, it was just so easy to see that, that Arsenal had a whole rake of chances, which they did nothing but um, effect poorly. And Spurs had a handful of chances, most of which they did in the most spellbinding manner. Quite. That goal from Sonny was, was sensational. That was beautiful. Absolutely. Top draw. But I, but it's inter it's interesting because people were saying um, on the blog that they thought oh the Chelsea game was boring and I think it did get a little bit boring in in places because it was a bit too much a sort of symphony of defending and waves. Well, we were playing like each other. That was the thing. yeah exactly exactly. But the City game was was the opposite of boring. The City game was exciting, and the idea that you get that excitement and you get to win two nil. But what's crucial here, and I think people, hopefully, the Spurs don't let me down, and this, this pans out, is like when we played Manchester United, and this was a crucial thing when I was doing this, the, the, the summary of the game that we then struggled against West Brom, is if you remove the name, you know, like they have that mystery singer thing on TV, so you don't actually know that it's Tom Jones in the lion suit or whatever. But if you removed the names of the teams and you just looked at the numbers and the way people moved and the, all the rest of it, West Brom were actually more difficult to break down than Manchester United. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's not a big leap to say, well, if they were more difficult to break down, I'd imagine Spurs scored fewer goals. Yep, you're right there. And Spurs would have scored more goals against Manchester United. And you're right again, because we, we won by a margin of five goals. So... 
I would suggest, and I said I could be wrong because it's not hard and fast this, but I would suggest anybody who's really getting emotional about the fact that we're only beating uh, Arsenal by two goals to nil, we're only at the top of the table, and they're not quite getting the ride enjoyment that the previous um, uh, clown was giving us. Wait till we play somebody really rubbish. Because I think there's going to be more of these four ones and six ones handed oh, out. Uh, uh, yeah, I, know, I hope so. Because you know, uh, because that's, that's because be good to see. because Arsenal, for all of their failings, they did actually prevent it from being six, uh, I mean, li- six li- one. Liverpool won four nil, didn't four they? Four nil. Yeah. These things can be done. And that penalty wasn't a penalty. Yeah. But that's that's something else. Yeah. Um. Should we be ever so slightly concerned about our UEFA team? Mm, I tell you what needs to happen, and my feelings on that are that this is a complex thing because I can't... uh, There are players... It doesn't take much to upset the balance of nature in Tottenham, and it never did. So when Pochettino used to do the usual routine of removing Kane until the last 15 minutes because he needed a goal and brought him back on, but he did his usual routine of of pulling our sort of first-tier starting 11 players, pulling them off, pulling on a second string, watching them struggle against some bunch of uh, awfully decent, hard-working, respectable dummies who couldn't play football very well... Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that didn't work, and I think uh, as as a method because we never progressed meaningfully in 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 that competition. Um, and I'd argue we never progressed meaningfully in the <laughs> meaningfully in the Champions League, given what happened to us. But the point being is, I think mentally they're still there about that. Oh, it's the UEFA. So what? dregs of society from the Spurs locker room are we going to see play mm. and so it's like oh you know it's going to be Deli Alley, it's going to be Joe Hart mm. and I think that mentality has to go but do you think the mentality of the team is, is <coughs> well that's what I'm talking right. about Give that's it. what I'm talking about because the whole team is the squad right so you've got to lose this business of the eleven. And I think, unless I've grossly misunderstood what Mourinho is is up to, is that he wants all of them to be this sort of amorphous thing so he can just take two midfielders and two strikers into the moulds and put them into the glazing, whatever the thing is. And it doesn't really matter who the names and the faces are that you'll get value back from them in terms of a football manager. And... What he did um, against Lask is that when he was dropping in these amorphous sort of <laughs> globs into the moulds, we had a Sanchez in there when we had a Sansa, and there were just some really duff performances. And Matt Doherty, I think, is getting a terrible rap. Um, I haven't found him a fascinating player by any stretch of the imagination, um, but I think he's 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 had the COVID thing he's had to recover from. Mm. And I also think he's struggling playing a right back because he was a right wing back. Mm. So I I think the solution is that they knuckle down and if you're playing in the Europa League, you don't see it. And this is the problem. This is the thing. Thank you you for correcting me. I keep calling it UEFA. Yeah, well, you, well, that's all the same. They're all bent, but oh, can you say that? Oh no, <laughs> we're going to get sued again. But the, this is the this is the, this is the real problem, is that you need to get into the psychological th- workings of these characters, and most of them are in their twenties, and that they don't look on this as a as a sort of uh, well, I want to be in the first eleven, starting eleven for every t- Premier League game because that's where the kind of the big fanfare is. And then we're having to fly out to, I don't know, Bosnia and Herzegovina to play in front of three men and a... Dog. Yeah, you know, and it's just... I can see how psychologically you could... But some of our players are able to cope with that. Like uh, Sonny and Hoybier, what a surprise. Drop them in Beirut and they, they, you know, just... I'll put my boots on, Gaffer, and I'm ready to go out. Sure, sure. Whereas these other guys, you know, it's a bit windy, it's a bit cold, oh, there's nobody here, oh, it's, um, yeah. 
I haven't checked my phone for three hours. And I think I think I think these are kids and Mourinho is the right guy to, to beat it out of them because he I think he is a tough coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank goodness for Mourinho. Next up, Crystal Palace. What do you reckon? They're gonna get beaten. By S- spanked. By us. Keep it Tottenham. Believe it or not, we'd really appreciate your feedback. Positive, of course. Give us a thumbs up, five stars, write a review, all the rest of it. Whatever platform you're on, really appreciate it. Helps to uh, get the podcast moving up through those podcasty, charty type things and uh, spread the word. Cheers, guys. Keep it Tottenham. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye.